ICU teams commonly inspect the waveforms which display on flat screen monitors that are an integral component of current day mechanical ventilators. But long before these display devices were integrated into vents, some research teams applied pneumotachographs, transducers, and oscilloscopes to patients in order to capture volume, flow, and pressure tracings in real time. In this module, I describe the activities in which I participated in the late 1960s in an anesthesia research laboratory. In this module, and only here, you'll learn how our research team captured waveforms that were diagnostic for a condition that we now recognize as ventilator asynchrony. Fully seven years after we published our findings in the journal Respiratory Care, doctors John Marini and Paul Pepe first described the condition that we now recognize as autopeep and explained how this disorder can predictably elicit asynchrony. This 28-minute educational module provides a comprehensive overview of the insights that can be gleaned from a careful inspection of respiratory system waveforms and emphasizes the importance of proper interpretation of those analog tracings by the members of the ICU team. It begins by defining the sensitivity and response time of a mechanical ventilator. As first defined by Dr. Ralph Epstein, we explain the mechanism by which a ventilator's sluggish response time can elicit ventilator asynchrony and examine the physiologic time and pressure events that can lead to that dysfunction. Next, a simple bedside technique is described whereby an RCP can determine whether or not a patient is suffering from asynchrony without recourse to any electronic instruments whatsoever. In those patients who exhibit asynchrony, the interaction between auto-peep and external peep is crucially important. And the strategy that can be used to identify an appropriate level of external peep is described and explained. Patients who are afflicted with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD are especially vulnerable to asynchrony. And the reasons for that are fully developed here. A particularly striking episode of asynchrony was observed in a COPD patient. And the waveforms that we captured on an oscilloscope screen are used to promote our understanding of the dynamic interactions between the lung and chest wall that prevailed. The pioneering work of Drs. Paul Pepe and John Marini supply us with valuable insights with respect to the causal relationship that exists between elevated expiratory flow resistance and auto-peep, a condition that was first described by Pepe and Marini in 1982. Unfortunately, many RCPs erroneously believe that hyperinflation of a patient's lungs is not necessary in the wake of endotracheal suctioning, provided that the patient is being ventilated with PEEP and that a closed tracheal suction system is being employed. The physiologic reasoning that contradicts this widely held belief is detailed. Part of the reason that hyperinflation after suctioning is obligatory relates to the lengthy time course that is necessary in order to resolve atelectasis triggered by the suctioning episode. All of us have had the process of atelectasis described to us verbally by a host of instructors and preceptors over the years. But the most effective method to teach practitioners about atelectasis and the effects of PEEP is by means of a video. This module incorporates such a video created by Dr. Arthur Slutsky, depicting widespread atelectasis in a pair of excised rat lungs. The viewer is then able to observe that the atelectatic lesion is not completely resolved until PEEP is imposed and six successive hyperinflations have been delivered. Once their volume has been restored, PEEP is removed and the atelectasis is subsequently seen to return 
after only two ventilatory cycles. The persistence of these images in the RCP's mind has proven to be the single most effective means to teach this important aspect of respiratory physiology that I have identified to date. The module concludes with a discussion of simulation models to provide clinicians with a hands-on tool to refine their mechanical ventilation skills.